Hello, this is Inger with Norway Calls. Today I need my old globe. It's from the German manufacturer Rettgloben, who is still in operation after being founded more than a hundred years ago. So, this is mainland Norway. Traveling to our capital, Oslo, on a direct flight from, for example, New York, would take like eight hours. Then you'd have to turn your watch six hours forward. The size of mainland Norway is just over 125,000 square miles, which is slightly larger than New Mexico. I have previously mentioned that the southernmost point on mainland Norway by the Lindesnes Lighthouse is located almost 58 degrees north. The northernmost point is on the island Margaray in Nordkap at 71 degrees 11 minutes north, the same northern latitude as, for example, 14 miles south of Point Barrow in Alaska. History says that Norwegian Vikings settled on Iceland in the late 800s and that the Norwegian Eirik the Red traveled on and discovered Greenland approximately year 982. His son, Leif Eriksson, later became famous for discovering Vineland or America, perhaps because he sailed off course when on his way from Norway back to Greenland over a thousand years ago. It is hardly visible on the globe, but between Norway, Iceland and Greenland we find Jan Mayen, also part of the Norwegian Kingdom. This little island covers less than 146 square miles. Nobody lives there permanently, but we have a meteorology station and some military personnel. Altogether about 18 persons may stay there during winter. In summer there are more. The Jan Mayen Island holds famous Berenberg, the world's northernmost active volcano. The Kingdom of Norway also includes Svalbard, an archipelago in the Arctic, covering approximately 23,500 square miles. Norwegian sovereignty was established by the Svalbard Treaty in 1920, an international agreement signed by several countries, including Great Britain and the United States. Norway sets the applicable laws and regulations, but the right to access and make use of Svalbard is shared by all the treaty nations without discrimination. Myself, I visited Svalbard in September 2013 and became fascinated, as it differs quite a lot from mainland Norway. For example, there is no value-added tax compared to the 25% levied on most goods in mainland Norway. One of the challenges on Svalbard is the population of dangerous polar bears. Except for all the tourists, less than 3,000 people live on Svalbard. The majority are Norwegian citizens, but many nationalities are represented in the tiny capital Longyearbyen. The largest foreign group being approximately 130 citizens of Thailan. Also, Russia operates a coal mine on Svalbard and has a settlement of about four to five hundred persons. Norway too runs the coal mine and the Norwegian Polar Institute has their office in Longyearbyen. Since 2008, Svalbard is home of a global seed vault where countries or gene banks can deposit seeds for safekeeping. It is hardly possible to purchase apartments or houses on Svalbard and the market for rentals is very difficult. Even though Svalbard is Norwegian, it is outside the Schengen border agreement area. Norway has three dependencies that are not included in the kingdom. The extremely isolated Bove Island is less than 19 square miles, mostly covered by glaciers. The Norwegian Polar Institute carries out research there, but the island is protected and activities are strictly regulated. Norway claims two dependencies in the Antarctic. Peter the First Island is approximately 60 square miles. This island is difficult to access from the sea and very few people have ever visited there. 
Finally, in Antarctica, we have the dependency Queen Maud Land, which we claimed in 1939 and named after our Queen, who had passed away the previous year. At this time, Norway was heavily represented in the area where we engaged in whaling. Also, we were eager to pursue our polar research there. Queen Maud Land covers about 1 million square miles, which equals approximately seven times the size of the Kingdom of Norway, or about one-sixth of the Antarctic continent. We have a research station there named Troll, which is manned all year round. Antarctica is far away, but Norwegians were good sailors and had the prerequisites to operate in cold environments. The Norwegian polar explorer Roald Amundsen achieved great fame when he became the first man on the South Pole in 1911. For his voyage he used the polar ship Fram, which can be seen today in its own museum in Oslo. I have visited on board a couple of times and find it incredibly modest and small, less than 128 feet long. With a population of less than five and a half million, Norway is a small nation, but not always modest. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon. Please subscribe to be notified about future episodes. For further information, check out our website at norwaycalls.com.